In this video, we're going to focus on vectors. What is the difference between a scalar quantity and a vector quantity? What would you say? What's the difference between these two? A scalar quantity has magnitude only, but a vector quantity has magnitude and direction. So for example, mass is a scalar quantity but force is a vector quantity. For example, let's say you have a mass of 30 kilograms. You can't say you have 30 kilograms directed east or 70 kilograms directed north. That doesn't make sense. So the 30 kilograms is the magnitude, but there's no direction that's relevant to it. So that's why mass is a scalar quantity. You can't have direction with mass. However, force is a vector quantity I can push an object with a force of 200 newtons directed east, or I can lift up an object with a force of 300 newtons directed up. So therefore, force has magnitude and direction. So if I direct a force of 80 newtons at an angle of 30 degrees above the x-axis, the magnitude is the 80 newtons. The angle, the 30 degrees, that's the direction. So other examples of vector quantities are velocity, velocity is speed with direction, and acceleration, which is how fast the velocity is changing. Speed is scalar, and temperature is also a scalar quantity. Let's say if we have an initial point, point A, which is at 1, 2, and a terminal point, point B, which is going to be at 4, 6. And let's say vector V is the directed line segment from A to B. How can you express vector V in terms of its components I and J? And also, how can you find the magnitude of vector V? Well, first, let's draw a graph. The majority of the graph will be in the first quadrant. So A is at 1, 2. So this is point A. And B is at 4, 6, which is about that point. The vector V extends from the initial point A to the terminal point B. The length of that line is the magnitude of vector v. Now, if we take the difference in the x values, that is, if we subtract 4 and 1, we're going to get 3, which means to go from a to b, we have to travel 3 units to the right, and we need to go up 4 units. Those are the components of vector v. So vector v can be expressed as 3i plus 4j i is associated with the x component of vector v. So you could say vx is 3. The y component of vector v is uh, 4, which is associated with the letter j. Now, to find the magnitude of vector v, you can use this equation. v is the square root of vx squared plus vy squared. This comes from the Pythagorean theorem c is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. So vector v is going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, and that's going to give us the length of the hypotenuse. By the way, when you see this inside an absolute value, it represents the magnitude of v, by the way. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. 9 plus 16 is 25 and the square root of 25 is 5. So the magnitude of vector v is 5. So this line is basically 5 units long. Let's try another problem. So let's say that point A is located at negative 4, negative 5. And point B 
is located at 1 comma 7. Go ahead and express vector v in terms of its components i and j and find the magnitude. So let's call this x1 and x2. And this is y1 and y2. If you don't want to graph it, you can use this equation. So vector v, which is the directed line segment from a to b, and let's say a once again is the initial point and b is the terminal point. It's going to be the difference in the x values, and that's going to give us the i component or the x component. And then we have the difference in the y values. That's going to give us the y component, which is associated with j. So x2 minus x1, that's going to be 1 minus negative 4. And y2 minus y1, so that's 7 minus negative 5. So 1 minus negative 4 is the same as 1 plus 4, that's 5. 7 minus negative 5, that's 12. So we have 5i plus 12j. So that's the vector v expressed in its components. Now we can also represent vector v this way as well. You can say it's 5 comma 12. So that's another way you can express it. Now let's find the magnitude of vector v. So it's going to be the square root of 5 squared plus 12 squared. 5 squared is 25. 12 squared is 144. And 25 plus 144 is 169. So this is going to be 13. So that's the magnitude of vector v. Now you can also get the same answer by graphing it as well. So A is at negative 4, negative 5. And B is at 1, 7. So here's B. So here's negative 4. And this is positive 1. So we have to travel 5 units to the right. And then from a Y value of negative 5 to 7, we had to travel 12 units up. So that's why the vector is 5i plus 12j. And then the magnitude, or the distance between the initial point A and B, is 13 units apart. So the magnitude of vector V is 13. Now here's a question for you. Let's say if we have the initial point A, which is at negative 1, negative 3, and you're given the vector V, which is the directed line segment from A to B, and let's say it's 3i minus 2j. What is point B if A is the initial point and B is the terminal point? How can you use vector V to find the answer? Well, you can get the answer graphically. First, let's plot vector A. So it's at negative 1, negative 3. And then we can use vector V to find point B. So notice that we have positive 3i. That means from A, we need to travel 3 units to the right. So we're at an x value of negative 1 if we add 3 to it. It's going to take us to this point here. So we travel three units to the right. Now, notice that there's a negative two in front of J, which means we need to go down two units. So therefore, this is point B. Point B is located at an X value of two and a Y value of negative five. So basically, if you have the initial point A and you want to find the terminal point B, all you got to do is simply add 3i or 3 to negative 1 
and also add negative 2 to the y value, negative 3. And then you'll get the point 2, negative 5. So that's how you can find the terminal point from the initial point. Let's try another example like that. So let's say the initial point A is 2, 3. And vector V, let's say it's 5i minus 4j. Find the terminal point B. So a quick and simple way is you could use a form if you want. Vector V is x2 minus x1. And it's also y2 minus y1 times j. So keep this in mind. This is x1, y1. That's the initial point. We need to find x2 and y2. So vector v is 5i minus 4j. And that's equal to x2 minus x1. And x1 is 2 and y2 minus y1. We're looking for y2, y1 is 3. So what we need to do is set 5 equal to x2 minus 2 because they're associated with the same variable i or the same letter i. And we have to set negative 4 equal to y2 minus 3. So 5 is equal to x2 minus 2. So basically we have to add 2 to 5 to get x2, the terminal point. So x2 is 7. Next, let's set negative 4 equal to y2 minus 3. If we add 3, negative 4 plus 3, that will give us a y2 value of negative 1. So therefore, point B is 7, comma, negative 1. So if you add 2 plus 5, you get 7. And 3 plus negative 4, you get negative 1. Now, let's say if we're looking for the initial point A. And let's say the vector V is negative 3i plus 4j. And the terminal point is 5, 3. Find the initial point A. So keep in mind, you can use the formula. Vector v is equal to x2 minus x1i plus y2 minus y1j. And it's always good to define where everything is. So this is x1 and y1. That's what we're looking for in this problem. And the terminal point b is x2, y2. So the vector v is negative 3i plus 4j. And that's equal to x2, which is 5, minus x1 times i plus y2, which is 3, minus y1, times j. So this time, we're going to set negative 3 equal to 5 minus x1. That's associated with the i values. And for the j values, we're going to set 4 equal to 3 minus y1. And let's find x1. So what I'm going to do is subtract both sides by 5. So negative 8 is equal to negative x1. And then if we multiply both sides by negative 1, x1 is equal to positive 8. Now let's set 4 equal to 3 minus y1. And let's subtract both sides by 3. 4 minus 3 is 1. And if we multiply both sides by negative 1, negative 1 is equal to y1. So therefore, the initial point A is 8 comma negative 1. Now, let's say if you're given an initial point in three directions. Let's say you have the x value, the y value, and the z value. And you're given the terminal point as well. Find the vector v and express it in component form, that is in i, j, and k. And also find the magnitude of vector v. So vector v is going to be the difference in the x values. That's going to give us the x component. And then the difference in the y values will give us the number in front of j. And the difference in the z values will give us the number in front of k. So 
So this is x1, y1, z1. And this is x2, y2, and z2. So x2 minus x1, that's going to be 2 minus 3. y2 minus y1, that's 8 minus 4. And then we have z2 minus z1, that's 3 minus negative 2. So 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So we got negative 1 times i. And 8 minus 4 is 4. 3 minus negative 2 is 5. So the vector v is negative 1i plus 4j plus 5k, which we can represent as negative 1 comma 4 comma 5. Now to find the magnitude, it's simply the x component squared plus the square of the y component plus the square of the z component all within a square root. So it's going to be uh, this square of negative 1 plus the square of 4 plus the square of 5. Negative 1 squared is just 1. 4 squared is 16. 5 squared is 25. 1 plus 16 is 17. And 17 plus 25, that's 42. And we can't simplify the square root of 42. So this is the answer. That's the magnitude. Now let's say the vector v is positive 4i plus 6j. This time, find the magnitude of vector v and also find the angle, the direction of vector v relative to the positive x-axis. So we know how to find the magnitude. It's going to be the square root of 4 squared plus 6 squared. 4 squared is 16. 6 squared is 36. 16 plus 36 is 52. Now, 52 is not a perfect square, so we need to simplify it. However, 4 goes into 52 13 times. So we can write it as 4 times 13. And the square root of 4 is 2. So the magnitude is 2 root 13. Now, to find the angle, let's assume the initial point is the origin. We need to travel 4 units to the right and 6 units up. So vector v is in quadrant 1. At least it's directed towards quadrant 1. And we got to find this angle. Now based on Sokotoa, you know that tangent theta is equal to the y component of v divided by the x component of v. It's equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So theta, the angle, is the arctan of vy divided by vx. And that's how we could find it. So it's the inverse tangent of 6 divided by 4. So you just got to type that in your calculator. And make sure your calculator is in degree mode. So this should give you an answer of 56.3 degrees. So that's the angle above the positive x-axis.